three and two and we got a glasses up and we got a one all right so welcome back everyone this is going to be episode two of our webpack desk server series installment so within the last episode we covered quite a few things but the main feature that we covered was hot module replacement which just means whenever we make a change to something within our source directory it's going to be updated within our browser real time without the need for a full page refresh this is really helpful because it saves us as a developer a lot of time because we don't have to wait or manually refresh our page over there on the right hand side. But we came across the issue where if we try to make a change to our index.html file, the browser isn't refreshed automatically like we expected it to be. Now, why is this? Well, Webpack Dev Server only watches for changes through whatever files are being pulled through the entry point that we specified within our Webpack config. So since index.html is not being pulled through there, well, Webpack Dev Server isn't watching for changes within that file. And you can get it set up so that Webpack Dev Server is watching for changes there, but really it's not something that I prefer to do. I would rather have Browser Sync watch for changes there instead. So Browser Sync, if you're unfamiliar with it and you don't know how to integrate it within Webpack, well, I do have a video which you can check out in this corner. I don't know if it's this corner or this one. Uh, you can check it out in one of those corners and if you want, um, but really, you don't, you don't even need to check it out. I'm gonna show you every step along the way in regards to getting this thing set up. So essentially it's going to watch for all the files that Webpack Dev Server does not watch for. So HTML files or backend files, whichever one we really want to specify. So it's going to watch for changes in those files, but that's not the only thing that it does. It also provides to us a, a, an external URL, which you'll see over here in the terminal. I have Browser Sync running for the Chris Courses development website, and it provides to us an external URL, which we can pop into any device that we wish. So you'll see right here that I put it in my phone's browser. Let's let that focus in. 10.0.1.6, I'm reading it backwards right now. I put this in my phone's browser and it's giving me an exact replication of what the site would look like if I were visiting it on my native phone right here. So if I start scrolling on my phone, you'll see that it's exactly synced up in real time with what we have over there in our browser, which is really freaking neat. And this is great for development purposes because we want to make sure that what we have in our browser on our desktop over there matches up with exactly what we have on our phone when we view it mobily. So one more cool feature is when we actually make a change to one of these source files right here, let's go ahead and delete this new episode's text. If I can delete it, I'm trying to use Vim right now. There we go. Go ahead and save that. Give it a second, give it a second. There we go. You'll see that it's not only updated real time in the browser, it's also updated real time on your phone. And this isn't even connected to anything. So really cool stuff. You don't even need a connection to have a real time one-on-one -on -one communication for a dev server between your browser and your phone. So really, I recommend using this for any project you do. It's going to save you the time of fixing bugs because you can fix them right away on your phone. And it's also going to save you the time of having to refresh your pages automatically. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing set up. Let me go ahead and move all this Chris Courses development stuff out of the way. And you'll see that this is where we left off within the last episode. We have this Webpack Dev Server homepage with some documentation and GitHub links. And within our project, you'll see that we have Webpack config set up with Webpack dev server set up as well. And we have hot module replacement. I should note that if we look within global.js, whenever we make a change to this right here, it's going to be hot, re hot module hot reloaded in our browser automatically without the need for a full page refresh. So the first thing we need to do to get browser sync installed into this is we need to actually install the browser sync packages. So if we look within package.json, you'll see that we have two browser sync packages installed. We have a browser sync package, and then we have a browser sync webpack plugin. Well, I guess these are already installed for us because within the last episode, we ran npm install or yarn install. And by doing that, it went through all of these dev dependencies and installed them into a node modules folder for us. So since we already did this, we already have browser sync and browser sync webpack plugin installed. But if you don't have these installed as of yet, you'll want to install them with npm install uh, browser sync or npm install browser sync webpack plugin or yarn whichever one you want to use and it'll go ahead and update your package.json correspondingly and you can make use of these packages within your webpack config which we're about to do next so within webpack config first thing we need to do is we need to declare a variable and let me go ahead and do that like so so we're going to say const browser sync plugin is equal to require and then we're going to be requiring the name of the browser sync webpack plugin. So I'm just going to go over here and copy this to save us some time and paste it within this require statement right there. So basically this is going to pull all the contents of this package and place it within a variable called browser sync plugin. So now we need to actually make use 
uh, this browser sync plugin. So the first thing we want to do is we want to copy this, head on down to our plugin section and specify that we want to make use of a new browser sync plugin. We're just pulling this right here and placing it directly within our plugin section. So this takes two arguments. The first argument it takes is going to be options pertaining to browser sync. And the second option it takes is going to be options pertaining to the plugin itself. So let's go ahead and get the first option set up. Actually, let's go ahead and create two objects, one for the browser sync options and one for our plugin options. And then we'll start adding some properties here. So the first property that the browser sync plugin provides or that it needs is going to be called host. And this is the host name for our browser sync server that we're about to create. So browser sync is going to create a local development server, very similar to what we see right here with Webpack Dev Server. It's just going to create this at a new URL that we specify. So our host name is going to be localhost. And then we need to specify a port number, which is basically this little number on the end of the URL name. And we're going to specify that the port number is going to be 3000. That's a typical port number for development. And then we need to specify the most important part. This is called a proxy property. So proxy, what does that mean? Well, a proxy is someone or something that acts on behalf of another. So if we view it this way, we want to specify what server is acting on behalf of our browser sync server. So we're going to have two servers created. We're first going to have our Webpack dev server running, processing any hot module replacement changes. And then it's going to hand off those changes to our browser sync server so it can run all of its magic, such as reloading index.html files, backend files, or viewing the, viewing the site on your local device. So our proxy property is going to be equal to the URL that Webpack Dev Server is running on currently. And you'll see right here, the URL is localhost 8080. So we're going to take this and specify that our proxy is going to be localhost 8080. So basically Webpack Dev Server, or excuse me, browsing plugin is going to act on behalf of Webpack Dev Server Webpack Dev Server is going to hand off its changes so that when we visit a URL of localhost 3000, it's going to allow us to make use of both hot module replacement, but also browser sync's nice features. So if we save this and actually restart Webpack now that we just integrated browser sync, so I'm going to cancel out of this is, okay, so Webpack Dev Server is running here. And since we want to make use of both Webpack Dev Server and browser sync, we need to make sure that both Webpack Dev Server and browser sync are running at the same exact time. So we already have Webpack Dev Server running, but we need to make sure that we're running browser sync as well. And to run browser sync, we can just type Webpack into the terminal like so. So that's automatically going to open up a new window or a new tab over at the URL that we specified right here. And you saw that you might have noticed that we had a little icon in the top right corner that says connected to browser sync. So we have browser sync integrated into our Webpack config, which is great. So if we look within our console, you might be expecting, okay, now we can make use of both hot module replacement and the refreshing on those other files. So let's go ahead and test this. If we go within global.js and start changing our console log right here, save that, you'll see we are, we're not actually getting hot module replacement like we expected. We're, we're getting browser sync's full live reload page refresh, which is a little odd. Let's go ahead and try to change what's within index.html. If we try to change something in here, nothing's happening as of yet. Well, we need to set up a little more configuration before we actually get uh, index.html reloading our browser automatically. And also we need to do a little extra configuration to ensure that whenever we make a change within global.js, we're still getting hot module replacement as we expected. So let's go back on over to webpack.config.js. The first thing we want to do is enable hot module replacement. So to do this, we're going to head on over to the, the, the webpack, uh, the browser sync webpack plugin settings. So the second object right here, and we need to specify that reload should be equal to false. So by default, browser sync webpack plugin is going to watch for changes uh, through whatever is being pulled in through our entry point, which is global.js, just like webpack dev server does. And since browser sync is coming after webpack dev server, well, it's overriding uh, webpack dev server watching for changes with hot module replacement. So we need to specify that we want to set reload to false. And if we go ahead and restart terminal with this new setting right there, I'm going to open up a new tab for us. And now if we try to look for hot module replacement, make a change right here, you'll see that we have hot module replacement enabled. Uh, but we're still not able to really refresh our index.html file that we have right here. Uh, if we try to make a change, the browser still isn't refreshing like we expected it to. 
So really, we need to add one more property to our browser sync configuration. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this in from an external file, mainly because it's such a lengthy piece of code. And if you would like to go ahead and paste this in yourself, it is in the description of the video. So feel free to do that as I'm doing this right now. So let me go ahead and explain what is going on here as I reformat this. Essentially, we just created a files property. And this is going to, this is basically a signifier of, signif signifier of what files should we be watching for? What files should browser sync be watching for? Uh, watching for changes in so that it knows to reload the browser whenever we make a change to one of these files. So right now I have this set to handlebars files. This is saying look within all directories for any files with an extension of .hbs, but really we want to make sure that this is an extension of .html instead. So if you'd like to add any other file type, then just go ahead and create a new string within the array and specify .php, .rb, whatever you would like. Uh, but for this project, we're only going to watch for HTML files. And then the second part, fn, stands for, I think it's function, I believe. Uh, it, might, it might be something else, but I'm pretty sure it's function. Essentially, what this means is we're only going to reload the browser if a change to this exact file is made. So nothing within the entry point, since we just disabled reload, we just set reload to false. We're only going to watch for changes for, for we're only going to watch for changes within HTML and PHP or whatever files we specify right here within the match section. So as soon as we add this and save our configuration and restart our webpack server over here, you'll see that it opens up a new tab in the browser connected to browser sync. And now whenever we make a change, let's go ahead and do our little test case here. Whenever we make a change to global.js within our console log, let's delete some text, make sure that hot module replacement is working, which it is. We have that working, but now we need the moment of truth. We want to make sure that whenever we make a change to our index.html file, the browser is doing a full page refresh as we expected. So let's go ahead and test it. Delete webpack server. Command S. I'm going to do the full drop. Let me go around here. Command S. There you go, as simple as that, guys. So as soon as you integrate this with uh, your, your Webpack configuration browser sync plugin, it's going to give you the ability to reload files that are not being pulled in through this entry point right here, which is really great because we fully automated our development process, or at least we automated a lot of it. And in addition, it's going to give you the ability to visit localhost 3000 on a mobile device. So if you wanna go ahead and see what URL you need to visit, just go ahead and visit your terminal you'll see access URLs are posted right here. You'll just need to go ahead and pop this into whatever device you would like. So let me see if I can do it really quickly without wasting too much of your guys' time right here. Let me go ahead and refresh this really quickly. You'll see if I visit the, <laughs> excuse me, if I go ahead and visit this URL, we have lovely text that says GitHub and documentation. It's really not too exciting. But if I go ahead and make a change to index.html here, let's go ahead and bring that text back, save the file. You'll see automatically updated on our phone, automatically updated within the browser. So there you have it, guys. Really cool stuff with integrating Webpack Dev Server for hot module replacement with browser sync so that we get the, the page reloading for those external extraneous files uh, along with this cool little trick with the device browser thingy. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, really, the next step from here would be how to connect these two servers to a backend server that processes a backend language like PHP, Ruby, or some other kind of backend language. Um, I don't have any plans on creating a video for that as of yet. It is a little confusing. Um, it's not the easiest thing to do with Webpack Dev Server because we need to make sure that Webpack Dev Server is a proxy for that backend server. Um, but if this is something that interests you guys, be sure to leave a comment in the description. I have a lot of videos lined up already, so I'm trying to make sure that I finish all of those before I move on to anything else. Um, but if it's something that interests you, be sure to leave a comment in the description. I'll be sure to pipe put the put the next video with the back and server on the pipeline for the future otherwise hope you guys enjoyed i look forward to seeing you in the next episode smash that like button don't do it um, i'm not begging for likes have a good day guys peace